So hi everybody and welcome back to the research in software engineering uh, group here at uh, Microsoft Research in Redmond. And I'm pleased to be here today with Leonardo and Nikolai from the Z3 team. So let's let's start by, uh, why don't you tell us about yourselves, guys? Let's go, okay, Nikolai, start. <laughs> I'm Nikolai, I'm a researcher here in uh, Rice. I'm Leo, I'm also Dean Rice. So we work in Z3, only we're working on Z3, the team improver. So, what is it your improver? Do you want to say something? Or? Well, so it's a program that takes a formula, logical formula, as input and tells you whether the formula is true or false. And uh, can give a proof for the formula or it can give a model shows that the formula is not true. Wow, that's a lot of confusing words in yeah, the same I sentence. Mean, the impression we have that when you explain someone, is that they think this is useless, right? <laughs> <laughs> why do you want to so why do you want a constraint solver? Well, I mean, we're in a software engineering group. I mean, we have many uh, verification tools, software analysis tools, testing generation tools, uh, and all these tools need some form of symbolic reasoning, right? So tools like PEX, Verified C, Spec Sharp, Sage, Sage, STV, and so on. I mean, many of we have many clients. So they, they all have at the core a component that uses and manipulates logical formulas and wants to ask know whether these formulas are true or false, or get models for the formulas. So, so can you give us an example just to, to have everybody on board here? Should we? <laughs> Let's see. I mean, a, sim a simple example. Okay, a uh, simple example, right? We have x greater than zero, right? Uh, and you say that we also have that y equals x plus 1 and y is less than 0. It's impossible to make this formula true, right? So you cannot assign values to x and y that are going to make this formula true. We can see that because x is greater than 0. Since y is equals x plus 1, we know by high school arithmetic that y is going to be greater than 1 in this way. There's no way y can be less than zero. So this, if we combine these this three facts, we get unsatisfiable. We say that this is unsatisfiable formula. There's no way to make it true. So we ask, we give the formula to Z3, and Z3 tells us unsatisfiable. Yes. And you can see, for instance, tools like PEX. They want to know if a path is feasible. They're going to create, from our path in the, from the program, they're going to create a formula that is satisfiable, right? That you can make it true if and only if you can execute that path. That's basically how these verification tools, these test case generation tools, and uh, use Z3. So what happens when there is a solution? Z3 is going to give you values for X and Y that make the formula true. So we could take, uh, we could change the formula <coughs> and make it satisfiable. So if we say that instead y being less than zero, y is less than three, then we can say that a, a legal interpretation or model for the formula is one where x is assigned to one and y is assigned to two. And um, so that piece of information can also be used as output, as, as, a, as a result of the theorem prover. So that's pretty easy. Why do I need a tool to, to solve high school uh, problems? Well, I mean, uh, in most cases, uh, most of the users uh, need some form of case analysis, right? You have to, the standard way to try all possibilities, but suppose that you have 32 options, right? And you want to try all combinations. It's more than 4 billion combinations, right? Doing the brute force solution is not going to scale in practice. And most of our clients, they have huge case analysis. I mean, they, to solve the formula, you have to do case analysis. One easy way to see case analysis is when you introduce an or, right? Suppose now that you have x equals y equals x plus 1, or y equals x minus 1, right? Now you have a choice here, right? So you, you can make this formula here true by making 
by assuming that y is equal to x plus 1 or assuming that y equals x plus minus 1. But in practice, I mean, uh, we have many choices like that. I mean. so, so it's very important. You, you mentioned you don't do brute force. So you just go on, don't go and try every integer for x and y and yes. let it run for a long time. Yes, exactly. Otherwise, these tools are not going to scale. I mean, I think the main, I mean, the problems that the tree can solve that they have really high complexity, right? Naive solutions are not going to scale, right? I mean, these problems are very, in the worst case, they are very hard, but in practice, they, they are, uh, if you use smart algorithms, they're going to be easy, right? So that's the whole point of Z3. So there's definitely a, a long, uh, a large amount of math behind Z3, and your publication page is, is, is filled with articles. Um, but uh, it, can people go and try out Z3 or learn more about it? Yes, uh, Z3 is available for download from the Microsoft web page. So uh, there's a download for Z3. And you can um, download it yourself and try it out. You can embed C3 in your .NET program or from C or from OCaml. And there are texts. Uh, you can also send text files to C3. So there are many ways to interact with uh, C3. So you mean I could take that program and ask C3 to solve it? Right. So you can write this formula either in a text file or you can uh, call the programmatic APIs into Z3 and, and ask it uh, whether it's satisfiable or, or not. All right, let's do it. All right, um, we're now going to um, write a uh, C Sharp program that uses the programmatic API to Z3 to um, try out the formula on the whiteboard that we just went over. And um, so, how do we use Z3? Uh, well, we start up uh, setting up the main types for it. So uh, we'll um, do that. The first type is called um, a configuration for configuring uh, Z3. Um, now a configuration um, is going to uh, require uh, using the uh, Z3 namespace. Um, And uh, using a configuration, we can set up a, a logical context uh, where um, it's done like here, uh, where all the um, terms and formulas are being um, put into. Um, so given a context, we can now uh, insert, uh, we can now create terms, and I am shifting in a few uh, pre-prepared terms, uh, x, y, and um, terms for 0, uh, 1, and 3, uh, the numerals. And uh, the way the terms are created is you can create a constant term for x, you give it a name, and you give it a sort. The sort for x is an integer. And uh, you can also create numerals. So the zero numeral is, uh, has value zero, and it has integer sort. Alternatively, you can give uh, sorts reals or bit vectors. Bit vectors are used for Why machine Why do we say that x and y are constants instead of variables? Uh, so, uh, we, so we say that they are constants as um, we, in, in logic, you distinguish between uh, functions, constants, and uh, variables that can be bound by uh, logical quantifiers. And uh, so x and y are not going to be bound by any quantifiers. They act, in fact, as uh, functions that don't take any arguments. Um, so given these declarations, we can now create our formula. Uh, the C Sharp API has some, or .NET API, allows uh, overloading a few uh, operators. So greater than and less than are overloaded. And you can create uh, the, the formula x greater than 0 or y less than 3 uh, directly just by writing uh, it using the infix notation. Uh, logical and is also overloaded. So uh, this you can just write directly. 
Uh, now equality is not overloaded, so here we're using the uh, lower level uh, functions for creating the equality uh, that says y equals x plus 1. And so now we have created this formula, and after creating the formula we can then assert uh, that the formula holds true in the current logical context. So that's what's happening on the next line. Um, so uh, the next thing uh, that's going to go on is that we, uh, we're going to check whether the formula is satisfiable. Uh, as we check whether the formula is satisfiable, we're, we're also going to want to ch uh, get a satisfying assignment, a model for the formula. So, um, so here's a model. Um, there's a type in, in uh, this uh, three uh, namespace. Um, and uh, we can use the model to... So, so what is a model exactly? What's the definition? So, so a model is, is going to be an object that um, con allows you to... Um, that contains the va values of the, the constants here in the problem uh, that's, that end up satisfying the formula. Um, it's also something that we pass into um, the, the, the function uh, that uh, checks uh, whether the current context is satisfiable. So here's the, the check and, and get model uh, function. Um, uh, it's called check and get model. It uh, takes a, a model as an output parameter. So if the um, context is satisfiable at this point, uh, then it will return a non-null model. Now, check and get model also returns a, a Boolean value um, that is true uh, if the uh, current context, uh, so the current assertions are satisfiable. It's false if the current con assertions are not satisfiable. Uh, or and then there's a special value if the current assertions uh, are not known by Z3 to be uh, satisfiable or unsatisfiable. This could be the case when there are quantifiers, so more complicated constraints that are not um, necessarily set, uh, decidable. All right, so um, let's print um, the result. And uh, if the model is, is not null, then that's also uh, printed. Um, and it has a display method. And um, we also need to dispose the model. Right, so now we have the, um, the function. Um, Uh, that we want to debug, and let's set a breakpoint and try it out. All right, so um, we need to see the output. <laughs> I'll tap. <coughs> and the output is... Very impressive. The <laughs> 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 um, now, now the, the, so the, the formula is satisfiable, uh, but we didn't print out uh, a model at this point. And that's because we explicitly have to tell Z3 uh, that we, in fact, want models. So Z3 is definitely a, a low-level tool. Um, usually tools would, would generate those formula for you. It, it would generate. I mean, you, you don't really write those formulas by hand all the time. You. You have little tools uh, that write it for so, them. So, so this, this using this uh, C sharp API is a low level um, way of interacting with Z3. We also have text uh, APIs that are easier for experimentation, for manual experimentation. Um, all right, so let's try to run this again. Um, and, and this time we get um, the, the model printed out because we have explicitly told Z3 that we Yay. want the model. Um, now we could uh, modify the formula um, to the unsatisfiable version. And 
uh, lo and behold, uh, we get the answer false this time. Excellent. Well, uh, Nikolai, thank you, and Leo, thank you for talking uh, about Z3 and showing, uh, showing the tool. Uh, and people can go to the Z3 website to get more info information on how to use it and see you around in Channel 9. Thank you.